Welcome back to One on One. I'm your host, Mfundo Mabalani. I'm still in conversation with the leader of the UDM, Mr. Bantubonke Olomisa. Mr. Olomisa, we're about to talk about the files. Yeah. You were said to be somebody who constantly leaked <laughs> files, but this was to your advantage. And for that reason, you were accused again of being a apartheid collaborator, sympathizer, or you must have had a source within the apartheid DMI structures. Colonel Duplessis, who was a liaison officer between Port Elizabeth, EP Command, that is SADF, and the Transkei Defense Force, retired around 1990-91. And then he opened a shop in Alice, but his store was bent down and looted by the people who were toy toying. So he came to Transkei and wanted to see me. And then he said, can you arrange a meeting between me and Mr. Mandela? Uh, I cannot accept this thing that uh, my shop has been bent down and there's no compensation by the ANC members. I said, but Mr. Mandela won't uh, be able to help you. Why don't you go to the government? And then later on, whilst we were talking about that, he says, another thing I want to confess to Mandela, Mr. Mandela, is that it is true that uh, the apartheid government is behind the so-called black-on-black -black violence. I said, but where is the proof that was the, not black on black force, but the third force. Yes. I said, but where is the proof? And then he said, I will bring the proof. I said, I cannot introduce you to Mr. Mandela if you don't have a proof. Came a week later, carrying a small envelope like this, brown envelope. Okay. This was the signal which ordered Goniwe and others to be removed permanently from society. Mm. So I arranged to see Mr. Mandela. We met with Mr. Mandela at Carlton Hotel in Joburg, downtown, and Jubilee came. So he read, Matjiba read this script. It was written in Africans, one page. And then I said to him, it means that this person permanently from society, this must be meaning that he must be removed and then we, he must be killed. Then we called in, we called in uh, Mr. <coughs> Duplessy, Colonel Duplessy. Mm -hmm. Then he explained. And then Matiba said, okay, that's fine. Uh, then Duplessy left. Matiba says, we'll come back to you. And then I said, Matiba, must I give this signal, this yeah. document? In the era of signals, as yes. we are now. Can I give you <laughs> this to President, to, to, uh, to, 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 to JZ, or Ntlantla, who were heading the intelligence? Yes. Matiba says, no, 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 no. Keep you it keep with it. You. Yeah. So I kept it at home. I think I flew up to Jobek more than six times with that signal. Mm. All the time, Matiba says, can you bring that document? He would read and read and read and read until he was convinced that this was a genuine, this was a genuine, hey, what's going on here? Yeah, that this was in fact a genuine signal. So that then, this, from then on... That this was a genuine signal. And uh, <clears throat> Matiba then said to me, I must call Duplessis again. So Duplessis came and then they met. Then this, he was uh, thanked for the good job. And then Duplessis in front of Mandela said there are many other files which uh, would prove. Then Matiba ordered The existence him, of the third force. Yeah, ordered him to say, he said, hand over those files to Bandu for safekeeping. 
Then Matiba, he called Zuelake Susur of the new nation. Yes. He said, well, we want to prove to the clerk that he's negotiating in bad faith during the black-on-black -black violence, boy patong, yes. massacres, and so on, that this was their policy. And at that, that, that time, there was a deadlock in negotiations. So we arranged that that signal be printed and be published in the new nation. Hmm. And this is where now Madiba used that as a bargain for negotiations. That you have been negotiating yeah. in bad faith. In mm -hmm. fact, you have been arming certain groupings yes. within our black nation. The rest of the other files which proved that this apartheid government was helping IFP and other using LLA elements from Lesotho. We released those documents with Zuelakese Sulu and late uh, Siepe, Jimmy Siepe, the brother to Sipo Siepe, yes. and Enoch Sitole, of, all of them were journalists of the a new, new nation. If there are those who say I used it uh, for my benefit, mm. they must go and at least there are some people who worked for the new nation, especially uh, uh, not Sipo, not not Zelake, uh, Stoll, Enoch Stoll. Enoch, yes. Enoch Stoll is still around. He would tell you how Madiba and Zelake and Olomesa planned that to help to put pressure on the Clark's government. And as a result of these uh, nauseating reports, there were attempts to assassinate me by FACPLUS. Hmm. We saw this now when de Kock and others applied for amnesty for having plotted to kill Olomisa. It's there, it's in black and white. Yes. But, you know, one would say it comes with the territory, at least uh, if you are labelled a populist or a liar, it comes with the territory of being a politician, that your legacy would be a contested one. But uh, beyond this, there was another allegation or accusation that Colonel Dooley, mm -hmm. also your friend, mm -hmm. that you were present mm -hmm. when he was Anne. executed. And Chris Annie. Yes. Strong allegation. Did you hear that? Yes, we've heard that the, allegation. The same allegation was made by this Dikok, who says uh, Olomisa and Chris Ani monitored the assassination of uh, Dooley. What Which, was your position on that? Remember that uh, on the day of the abortive coup, I was at home. I was there the whole day. Right in the early hours, General Matanzima said, don't go to the office. All along the media of South Africa, when they were calling me, I was at home. I only went to the stadium around 3 o'clock when the population of Mtata converged at the stadium. And then I was making a statement when the report came while I was at the stadium to say Dooley, who was taken alive from the building, injured, being injured, has passed on. And then I mentioned that. Mm -hmm. So where was Holomisa and Chris Anne at that state? Chris Meaning he had succumbed even... to his injuries, is that what you're saying? Yes, that's what was reported. Hmm. So I don't know this story of trying to discredit Holomisa, but it didn't stick. Here am I. I didn't even go to the TRC to go. I... I'm here to say I, have, uh, I, was, I monitored the, the, the killing of so-and-so. I was at home. But the relationship thereof, there was a friendship. Uh, there uh, was a friendship with Dooley. Yes. There's a friendship with the family and the wife and kids. There has not been any change with that family. It that was the my imagination of the ANC when they wrote that booklet called The Rise and Fall oh, of Olomisa, oh, which, mm. of course, uh, the author of the book, Jeremy Cronin, has publicly said I was used, he was used, and he apologized. So how do you contend with those people who are running the country today? Hence, there is this mess of corruption 
and lies and lies and lies. They're biting each other. They are killing each other today. But then some would argue that, uh, just as Winston Churchill says, that uh, history will be on his side because he intends to write it. I mean, you authorized your biography. So somebody could easily say that, oh, Mfundo, give the ANC their side of the story. Allow Jeremy Cronin to come. Allow Saul Kersner to say at least what happened. So some would say that this remains Bantubonke Olomisa's version of what happened within I'm, the ANC. I'm, I'm happy that uh, Jeremy Cronin, the author of the book, of the, the rise and fall of Olomisa, has himself said he felt that he was used and that Wolomisa would have made a big difference within the ANC. It's not me. Mm -hmm. but, so, the... but, but when it comes to dealing with liars and propagandists, I don't have time for that. Not at all. That's why I told them when they said they are going to discipline me, I said, you can go and discipline, can go jump. I'm not going to withdraw what I had said in the TRC. But then they went on to try and discredit. They didn't credit me for having helped them. It's only now that people are saying, by the way, this is the person who took us through from 1990 up to 1994. Hmm. This history is there. But then now we come to the administration. That, I mean, they've always criticized the homeland system, mm -hmm. particularly the administration thereof, mm. to say there was rampant corruption, nepotism across the board, across the board. And they said, even when you came on, you didn't mm. stop that corruption. Well, if you say we didn't stop the corruption, you must go to the court's records in Transkei. We even prosecuted, uh, I mean, even Matanzimo was prosecuted by independent courts, sentenced to nine years imprisonment. He served only three years after his health deteriorated. He was released. And the other people were also sentenced. The issue of uh, people going to the villages when they had to do work and demanding to be given sheep or brandy, we stopped that. And uh, there was no corruption in the scale you are seeing it today, where the ministers would give directives that a business must be given to so-and-so, not under the military government of Transkei. I still sleep and those who are serving peacefully, not worried that the hawks will be surrounding our homes because we didn't steal. Olomesa, you remember that in that document, that Olomesa You promoted yourself, yes, increased your salary, salary so just before. Mm. But I was earning a salary of what? Of being a director general. I never gave my basic salary as a prime minister. His records are there. All those lies, that's why now Jeremy Cronin is, is saying that he felt he was used. Mm -hmm. You emphasize that yours was the military government. Yeah. But we had the other Bantustan leaders. The I'm likes not, of I'm Mangop. not resp responsible for Mangop. Uh, fa fair enough. But mm -hmm. you were also criticized for your relationship with him, which you came out and say, oh, well, um, other leaders of political parties have interacted with other unsavory characters. No, 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 no. The homelands, the homelands government, we would go, for instance, to Pretoria for meetings. We would be there, we'd take pictures with them. But politically, we were towing a different line in Transkei. And I'm happy about the role which the military government of Transkei played. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you compare with what you are seeing now, <laughs> I think we, we betted very well. And we are still occupying the crease. I've been hitting fours and sixes, and I'm still going to do the same. While those who were discrediting Golomesa are now in the street and struggling. Talk to me about the death of Krizani. How that impacted you? Well, obviously, the death of Krizani impacted almost everybody. I guess even 
white South Africans wanted change in this country. Uh, the last day I, 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 I visited uh, Chris Arnie's uh, place, no, 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 let me put it this other way down. Chris, uh, Mr. Mandela phoned to say he's going to spend holidays in Transkai, Easter holiday. And then we welcomed him. While we were there, he says, Bantu, I was supposed to go to Swaziland to attend a wedding for one of the king's brothers. I won't be able to go. Can you go and represent me? So I flew that uh, to Swaziland on that Friday, uh, uh, Easter Friday, a uh, good Friday rather. Came back the same evening, same day. While I was landing, I saw that there was a jet parked outside. And then I saw Matiba's bodyguard saying uh, Matiba would like to see me in the lunch. So they whisked me to there. I said, Daddy, where are you going to? You said you have, you have come to spend your long weekend here. He says, Bandu, I've got bad news for you. I said, what? Mm. Uh, your friend is no more. I saw. Mm. Who, who's that? Chris has been assassinated. I just couldn't believe that. Mm. And then he said, uh, I want you to accompany me to Johannesburg to see his home and also to meet the leadership of the ANC. We took the, his jet, landed in Johannesburg, Cyril Ramaphosa, Jill Marcus, Joe Slovo welcomed us. They briefed Matiba and I, and then we proceeded to the SABC on that uh, evening when he delivered that uh, statement, which calmed the nervous population of South Africa. Hmm. So it was a big loss. We worked so well with him. You remember that uh, when de Klerk wanted to, when he withdrew his indemnity, he, Matiba called me and Mr. Sisulu. and says, what must they do now? I said, no. Chris must go and stay in Transkai. Mm. We will protect him there. And that if the clerk wants Chris, they must apply for an extra, uh, use the extradition treaty we have. And uh, of course, the clerk didn't do that. Later on, Slovo and Matiba went to see the clerk, and that indemnity was withdrawn. But Chris stayed in Transkai almost three months or four. And during the time he was there, he moved around Transkai telling people, why must we go back to South Africa and so on. Hmm. As a result, we had a smooth transition as compared to other homelands. He did very well. But the killing of Krisan is still a mystery. As the SACP maintains. When you are going to assassinate somebody, obviously you, you, you follow his roots and patterns and so on. On this particular day, why, how did Louis, Jalus, Jalus, ne? Yes, Jalus, Jalus. Mm. Yes. How did, uh, uh, what do you call him? Janusz Valus, eh? Janusz <laughs> Valus, the Polish Valus man. and Louis yep. knew that he was not with his bodyguards. And even have the audacity to drive his car inside the, the drive-in at Chris and his place. Somebody still has to explain to us. Which becomes the question. Because... <laughs> For the longest time, the SACP was not satisfied with just those. They felt there was more, and we want to know who you collaborated with, who assisted. Well, let's leave it to the ANC and SACP. They are in charge of the government. They should know better. But how would they know? 
because they are still begging that perhaps we would have Yanush Valush tell us who else, if at all, if at all, because he maintains he was part, but there's nobody else. I guess that's why they are not releasing him. <clears throat> and I think he should rotten in jail if he doesn't tell who assisted him. Mm -hmm. Now, your brief stint, if we can call it that, you're brought into the ANC, great reception, you're expelled, you dust yourself off, the UDM is born. Mm -hmm. Some quickly criticize you and say, what is the identity of the UDM? Mm -hmm. Are they left of the ANC? You say, we're going to go on some sort of a fact-finding mission. Mm -hmm. We're going to speak to the people of South Africa and define what this party needs to be. Talk to me about the birth of this political party. When you talk about the ideology of the ANC, whether it's central, left, right, if I were to be mischievous to you and ask you a question, what is the ideology of the ANC? I would what say would it's a say? nationalist party. I would say they are more to the center. They were left, perhaps, more to the center now. Sometimes <laughs> the policy is leaning towards the right. They might differ. Fair enough. Well, but they, they, that, that be you will, I would you will, place You will never identify them because they accommodate the hardline socialists, the capitalists, the poor, the rich. So let's leave it there. So the United Democratic Movement is a political party which has got pillars such as integrity, dignity, and uh, making sure that uh, the wealth of this country is distributed fairly so that we can improve the quality of life for all. Especially that we are faced with so many backlogs and imbalances of the past. The UDM believes that the state must intervene in a big way in certain areas, such as infrastructure. In the economy, like the Afrikaners did, you can't fold your arms and ask to be voted into power. Once you are in power, then you point fingers on the performance of markets and stocks and bonds only. You have to intervene to help small businesses so that uh, at the end they will create jobs. How on earth would you expect South, Afri South Africans to rely on companies which are controlled by a four, four million white population, whereas you have about 52 million black population? Mm -hmm. Why don't we look in investing in the other 52 million? Create, make sure that you create, you make create, uh, you create uh, uh, wealth for those people so that they can employ people. And then Simple as that. Don't come up and philosophize all sorts of things. You have 52 million population who are queuing to get jobs from maybe 300,000 companies which are owned by 4 million population, population whites. Yes. That has to change. The only way of changing it is to make sure that when you allocate budget. There is a money which is dedicated to, 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 to start up businesses for those, like other countries have done. They We've attempted with the gear? They, they attempted no, with no, gear? No, 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 gear? Where you went on to say that, no, no, you get all these projections on computers about jobs that will be created, but in reality, the jobs are not created. Well, you are with me because the, the gear was never intended to spend money. They abandoned the RTP which, have, which would have addressed these, impact, uh, these backlogs and imbalances. Hmm. And then here we are, the mm -hmm. politics right now, our political landscape. Many still say, this is a missed opportunity here where we've got these other political parties who should in fact come together to create that strong opposition. You collaborate on a number of issues, but uh, <coughs> I don't think there's any word on perhaps these parties coming together as one? Well, it doesn't work like a simple arithmetic just to put political parties together to gang up against a certain ruling party. Yes. But in this case, uh, the political landscape is going to take place on its own. And I think the first phase towards that is going to be 
through coalitions. We have all demonstrated in the local government elections, after, government, after local government elections, with all its problems. Yes. But, but at least expect that at national level, there might be coalitions. The mistakes which Beyond we are witnessing, 2019. Yes, mm. mistakes we are witnessing now, will serve as a yardstick to make sure that we don't repeat the same mistakes. But are you keen particularly because we have reported on the UDM and that rocky start to the coalition? I'm part of the coalition to Johannesburg. We are running the coalition. The Scopa is chaired by the UDM here in Johannesburg. Mm. The issue of Port Elizabeth cannot yes. be used as a yardstick that the coalitions don't work. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question of uh, us making sure that what happened in Port Elizabeth doesn't happen in future. Mm -hmm. Lastly, a contentious issue, land expropriation without compensation in mm -hmm. South Africa. What's your position on that? This thing is simple. You guys, you, 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 you must remember about the history of this country. In, at CODESA, we focus mainly on gaining political freedom. The economic freedom and land distribution was covered under the Constitution so that the new government can attend to those issues. New government at some stage had a two-thirds majority. Their priorities were upside down. They should have said to, to the South Africans, the issue of the economy, you can't emancipate a black majority in this country if they don't own a piece of land. Use common sense. Later on, now they are saying, uh, no, we wanted to introduce uh, this and this and this and that after they have failed dismally to make sure that this land issue is addressed. So the United Democratic Movement is saying the majority citizen of South Africa have no access to land. Change the policy. How you are going to change that, obviously you have to converge under one roof and say, guys, this is the situation. Fortunately, when uh, the uh, EFF tabled their motion, we supported them when it was amended that this must be reviewed in a way where the people can come and make a presentation. Because this is not a jungle administration. We have a constitution here. Yes. So we support the current process where we are going to say, one, where is this land we are talking about? Who owns this land? Who is auditing this land? Which part of the land is owned by the state? Which part of the land is owned by churches? Mm. Which part of the land is owned by private citizens? From 1994, who were beneficiaries of this land? If we say today we sit across the table and say we want to sit with the owners of the land, are you sure that you are still going to see white people that side? Only? I doubt. Hmm. Time will only tell. Mr. Bantu Bonke, thank you very much <laughs> for joining us this thank evening. You, thank you, ma'am. And that's where we leave it. Until next time, have a good evening.